Yeah, uh, so in this morning uh, session, there are uh, two invited talk. So the first uh, invited talk speaker is uh, Dr. Chris Bohr, and uh, he's the chief technology officer and the co-founder of the X uh, Discipline Company. Before joining XDC, he was the chief technology officer at X Set Print uh, uh, Limited comp uh, Company, for, uh, founded to uh, de develop and commercialize uh, advanced macro assembly technologies. Uh, he was formerly a uh, technical manager at uh, uh, Simpris and uh, where uh, he led the team responsible for the macro uh, transfer printing and wafer level packaging of the advanced macro scale solar cells. And uh, he previously worked at uh, RTI International and uh, Bear Labs and also in play photonics. And uh, he received a PhD degree in physics from the University of North uh, Carolina uh, Champion Hill in uh, 2000. And uh, he is author uh, over 120 scientific publications and has filed over uh, 150 patents. So uh, let's welcome uh, Dr. Chris for his presentation. Dr. Chris, please go ahead with the presentation. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, Tiwei. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Paul Franzone for the invitation to speak here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Chris. I'll, I'll be talking today about miniature heterogeneous micro LED packages for high performance display systems. It's a little bit of a change of pace. You know, I'm, I'm going to talk about displays, but I, I'll try to uh, keep you uh, engaged uh, in interest here. Just really quickly, I'm, I'm going to cover quite a bit of ground. So some interesting topics I'll have to barely hit on, but I'll try to point those out. Uh, Please reach out to me if you want to talk afterwards. So about X Display Company, we call it XD. Uh, XDC was founded in, in 2019. It actually was founded when the company Acceloprint split into two. So uh, X Display is all about displays. We closed a Series A round of financing in 2020, actually just before the pandemic uh, really ramped up. We're, uh, we're based in Cork, Ireland and Research Triangle Park here in North Carolina. We've been doing mass transfer for about, uh, well, over 15 years, really, uh, several of us. We, uh, we work hard to think about it in terms of uh, production. We've tried to make solutions that are gonna be useful for people who want to do mass transfer for a, a variety of applications. At XDC, we're really focused on displays. Right now, we, we focus on helping our partners create better displays. Hey, you know, it's really, uh, it's never been a better time to be in the display industry. It's kind of funny. The display industry isn't highly thought of for, for some, some aspects, but uh, for a variety of reasons, the pandemic's kind of been really a, a, um, a bit healthy for the display industry. So it's about a $150 billion market right now. Uh, you see companies that haven't uh, made money in a long time making money. Uh, and uh, there's a real interest in making better displays, and that's what we're all about. I guess I, you know, just to, you know, I'll go to this next slide, but uh, I want to, you know, displays. In this country, we don't, in some sense, we take displays for granted, but displays are the most important human to technology interface. Our eyes are our highest bandwidth way to take in information. And just think about your day. Think about how often you're looking at your phone, your computer, your laptop, your watch, et cetera. Uh, some people think dis displays are really, you know, they're striking now, but it uh, displays will be better. So, so uh, you can, you know, there's going to be better and better displays in the future and we need them. Uh, you know, we get eye strain. Uh, I mean, there's lots of ways to improve displays. We need them to be more energy efficient. Uh, and we need, uh, you know, right now we see that some of our supply chains aren't very resilient and I, you know, ch chips are on everybody's minds, but I think displays are not a very resilient supply either. So uh, if we could make displays in new geographies, that might make the world a more resilient place uh, for a really key, key part of how we uh, live our lives. So let's talk about how do we make better displays? And this is really our heritage. You, you make uh, if you put better materials in displays, you can make better displays. And, and that's, that's really fundamental, at least when I think about it. And what I really think about, when you think about displays, people want displays on plastic sheets or glass sheets. Those are not ideal substrates to get high performance semiconductors. 
when we think about getting the best semiconductors, you want to think about single crystal wafers, uh, high temperatures, epitaxy processes, fine lithography. We get, the world has those today. They're on wafers. Uh, you can make better displays if you can move those materials onto panels. And so that's where mass transfer comes in. I'm sure most people are familiar with mass transfer. Uh, for a long time, we called our technology micro transfer printing. Uh, a lot of people say, well, hey, this is really just massively parallel pick and place. That's what it is. Well, the term that sort of caught on in the display industry is mass transfer. That's what it's called now. Uh, and so that's it. That's the key thing. So if you have a really great mass transfer technology, you can get small devices made on wafers, the best devices, and you put them on display. It's not as simple as saying all you need is mass transfer. To make the best displays, it actually involves other disciplines. So you need to think about, well, how do you make these tiny devices on wafers and make them high performance? That's this union of the disciplines are required. You got micro displays, you have mass transfer, uh, and you have display architecture. A key thing I, I should sort of, this is where I'm gonna introduce, I'm, I think most people have probably heard about micro LED displays. In some sense, you're thinking about displays where in each subpixel you're replacing, uh, you're, you're going to put in a little inorganic LED in each subpixel. So it's like the, the solid state lighting, you know, where Nakamura got a Nobel Prize. Well, take those same concepts, you get a very efficient light emitter and you put it in every subpixel. It sounds really expensive. The reason it, it's practical and not expensive is because. When inorganic LEDs are run efficiently, they're very bright. And so what it means, I'm trying, uh, it doesn't show up very good on this uh, projector, but the, the size of the micro LED in each subpixel should be about 1% of the area or less to be efficient. If it's bigger than that, you're really not designing your display right. You're not running your LED efficiently. So, so keep in mind, when you think about a laptop screen or TV that's micro LED, if it's designed right, only uh, less than 1% of the surface should be semiconductor. And so that's the real cost breakthrough with micro LED is it doesn't take a lot of semiconductor, but you have to spread out these tiny light emitters very efficiently over the surface. Uh, I say room to do more. Well, there's a lot to that. Well, so when your pixel is not taking up with the light emitter, you can do other things. You can add sensors. You could maybe add communication features. You can also just add redundancy. And so that's a big, the question is, well, are you really gonna transfer 8 million little solid state inorganic LEDs and yield these? Well, one of the key things you can do since they're so small, you can put two or three in a sub pixel. So there are some tools to, to yield these displays and I'll show you some examples. So micro LED is the display of tomorrow. And it's here today, and it's going to bring things like brightness, efficiency, color, et cetera. I won't go through the long list. It's really better by, in every way uh, compared to LCD and OLED. Uh, but there is this sort of looming question. Is it going to be a specialty display, or will it be our everyday display? Is it going to be in our pockets and on our wrists? That, the answer to that question really lies with the mass transfer solution. How good is mass transfer going to be? That's our heritage. I'm just showing you, I'm going to be quick here, but uh, this technology came out of John Rogers group at the University of Illinois many years ago. Some early examples of micro LED displays going back to 2009, 2011, 2009. So I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to I'm going to introduce our mass transfer technology. Again, this was called micro transfer printing for many years. I call it now elastomer stamp mass transfer. So I'm really doing massively parallel pick and place of tiny devices with an elastomer stamp that at its core. And so here's a really simple cartoon explaining it. So the stamp is a glass substrate that has a patterned PDMS elastomer surface. It's patterned in a way that controls the pitch uh, of the devices that you're going to pick up from a source wafer. And here I'm just showing three what I call posts, but these stamps can have hundreds of thousands of posts. There's a few features of this structure. It's a simple structure, but it, it's kind of nice in a few ways. It's compliant in the Z dimension. If you're going to try to contact real world surfaces, that's a key feature. 
It's also rigid in X and Y. So you can pick up hundreds of thousands of these devices and not lose the, uh, the fidelity of the array that was made lithographically on the source wafer. Another feature, the, the forces between the PDMS stamp and these chips are very weak, short range forces. They're Van der Waals adhesion forces. It means uh, if you try to do this type of technology with strong forces, you really run a lot of problems with interfering with close by near neighbors that you don't wanna disturb. So that's an advantage. Um, I've already mentioned it's naturally compliant. It's also these stamps are naturally transparent. So you just put a microscope on this side of the stamp and you simply look through the stamp when you do your alignments. These stamps are robust. So they do this transfer process for tens of thousands of times without any degradation of the process. It's low cost, it's made out of silicone and glass and it's made using uh, an injection molding process. So what we do is we make a master wafer on a silicon wafer this master wafer has the inverse pattern of the stamp that you wanna create. That wafer goes into a mold and then you inject PDMS in between the glass plate and this master wafer. And that ultimately after you cure the PDMS, you pull the stamp out and what you have is a stamp that looks and feels like a photo mask. It's rigid, but it has that compliant PDMS surface. If you put it in an SEM, you'll see the post uh, that are designed to pick up the individual micro LEDs that we'll be transferring. One of the things we do, and I'll be quick here, is we make equipment, we provide it to our partners to help them learn the process and get started. Uh, the way I like to explain this process, it's a motion plus optics process. There's no vacuum chamber, there's no liquids or gases or even heat. It's done at room temperature. That means it's a lot like a metrology tool. This is a very, uh, you know, the bill of materials for this type of tool isn't like a, an a, a mat PCBD tool. It's very different. It's a motion tool. Here's a picture of a tool that's designed to populate 300 millimeter wafers that we sell today. It has a stage that moves 800 by 600 millimeters. And this is looking down at the stage top down. So let's talk through how this process works. It's a sequence of moves. Like I meant, said, it, it's a motion process. So when that stamp touches down onto a source wafer, you actually can see when the post contact, there's actually a slight darkening that you can detect. So that's contact. Then the stamp moves up quickly. And that means that these chips are now on the stamp. And then the stamp is moved over the destination substrate. This is a non-native substrate, for example, a display but backplane. So this is a glass substrate that has metal patterns. Then looking through the stamp, you do an automated alignment, you touch down, and then you move the stamp in a way that when you lift the stamp up, all of the chips get transferred to the uh, destination surface. After that process, the stamp moves to a cleaning pad. This is just a sticky surface uh, that touches down and then it returns to the source wafer. And it indexes, I, a key point of this is the devices are made densely. So when it returns to the source wafer, it indexes to the next array to pick up, but it's right in that same area for the stamp. That way you get this multiplicative effect. So if you have this area on a wafer, you might multiply that by a hundred X onto the display or more depending on the application. Let's talk about cycle time of that process. A lot of people wanna know what's the throughput of your mass transfer technology and I'll try to get to that. But today that sequence of events in our lab takes 20 seconds. That's the tack time from pickup to next pickup. Uh, that's for a single print head. And then uh, this is a look at the Pareto of the different aspects of the process. So I mentioned, you know, you've got stage travel, you have the alignment routines that use things like pattern recognition software, you've got the print and pick processes, and then the cleaning process. If you look, the, the tack time is not dominated by one section. And this is why I'm really confident you chip away at each of these, and you get to under 10 seconds in the future. Let's talk about throughput. A lot of people just want to, well, like, what's the throughput? Like, it's got to be one number. Well, in our process, it's not one number. It's a function of, for a single print head, it's, it's how fast does it move, the cycle time, which I've showed you. But then it's a function of how many devices does each stamp area carry on its way to the destination substrate. So that's a function of the density of the chips and the size of the stamp. So if you have a bigger stamp with a higher density of devices, you, you move more devices. So here I've shown it graphically. This is millions of units transferred per hour 
versus that cycle time. So I said, we're at 20 seconds today. So if you imagine a vertical line going up here, these different blue curves rep represent different stamps. So if I have a stamp that's moving 250,000 chips per cycle, I'm at around 30 million units per hour transferred per print head. If I have a stamp that moves a million units per cycle, I'm, I'm over 100 million units per hour per print head. That's the throughput. And just the frame of reference, I mean, a million post is not, um, it's a very realistic thing. That's a 60 by 60 millimeter stamp area uh, at a 60 micron post pitch. That's 423 posts per inch. Now I'm gonna quickly show you some, uh, just some examples from our past, but I wanna sort of highlight the types of yields we get with this process. So this is an SEM picture of uh, a source wafer of red LEDs. These are three by 10 micron uh, LEDs. And this is a simple passive matrix display that we made in 2015. It has four nines transfer yield. This is made in an R&D lab. Really, uh, it's really an amazingly high transfer yield uh, for this process. So it can be very high yield. This is another example where we were moving 70 by 35 micron silicon nitride chips. Again, two examples of uh, four nines transfer yield with two different size stamps. So with a 12 by eight uh, millimeter stamp and with a 25.6 millimeter stamp. Finally, I wanted to show you that the stamps can really scale in size. This is an example of a stamp that has 130 millimeter active area and we demonstrated uh, uh, three nines and a half transfer yield. Uh, I think this was several years ago, 2017. So I'm gonna switch gears again and really get to, my title is about miniature micro LED packages for displays. And so I'm gonna to get to that. We, we call these devices pixel engine devices. And I'm gonna hit on three different types of devices. This, this has to do with our device roadmap. So the first device I'm gonna talk about is just, it's a micro IC. It's not an LED. This is a integrated circuit made at a, um, CMOS foundry that we transfer and we use that to drive the LEDs and I'll explain why. The next device I'll talk about is a, it's a really simple package that just includes a, uh, a discrete red, green and blue LED that's already been mass transferred to an interposer wafer. We make this device on an interposer wafer that allows a larger format wafer that we can then transfer to the, to the display substrate. And then the final device I'll talk about, we call Pixel Engine All-in-One. It's a combination of the micro IC with the LEDs in one package. So that does everything that you need in your Pixel. So let's look at the Pixel Engine uh, micro IC. And uh, you know, just to be quick, we, uh, this is made in an SOI CMOS process. It's made by a foundry called XFAB. This entire process has now been transferred to the foundry. So we don't have to do anything in our lab. We simply, uh, the foundry has uh, the whole process now. Ultimately, what you end up with are, are very thin, small micro ICs that are undercut. They're held on with a tether and they're anchored to the substrate via this uh, line of material here. And so this, these are ready to be picked up and transferred with very high yield to the uh, display back planes. This device for frame of reference, this is a, uh, approximately 90 by 50 microns by about 10 microns thick. That device uh, goes into display prototypes that we've been making for a few years. This is an example of a 5.1 inch display. It's 70 PPI. The image that the display is showing here is, is in the foreground of this dog. In the background is there a, there's a toy dog. We're just illustrating how transparent this display is. Uh, this display has two of those micro ICs in each pixel. If you can see this little inset and there's two of each color micro LED in each pixel. Each of these micro ICs has a 48 bit memory. And so this is a completely digital display architecture. It's really not like any other display. So we load in digital data, it gets stored in each pixel. And then this uh, micro driver drives the LEDs with pulse width modulation. It means that the LEDs get a constant current so we don't have to deal with things like color shift and we can drive the LEDs in an efficient way. And I'll, uh, I'll kind of uh, just to advance on that, for those who understand how micro LEDs operate, if you think about their efficiency, there's generally a range of current density at which they operate efficiently, but that efficiency can really drop off at low currents or high currents. For, for display folks, it's this dropping off at low current that's really a problem for analog drive. If you try to do your, uh, 
LI uh, curves with analog, you really uh, have some challenges. But if you can do PWM, you have this opportunity to really get the most out of your micro LED efficiency. Okay, um, keep moving. These next few slides, I can be really quick. I'm, uh, they don't show up that great. I'm just showing you some pictures of displays. I'll highlight some attributes. These are a, a couple of displays where we've reduced the thickness of the wiring lines in the display. And so the only thing that blocks the light in these displays are the, uh, the metal wires and the uh, micro ICs and micro LEDs, but they don't take up a large area fraction of the display. So it's, it's a nice way to show that you can make very transparent displays. This is about 70% transparent. And the micro LEDs can provide the brightness you need to make transparent displays look uh, really good. Another thing that you can do with this micro IC technology is you can make very bright displays. And so this is an example of that same reference design, that 5.1 inch sort of cell phone sized display. We're driving these LEDs with very high currents uh, to, to get very high brightness. And so this is about 30,000 nits. And so we're comparing it against cell phone brightness here. This is sort of max brightness of an AM OLED cell phone. The other thing that you can do with these displays is you can start hiding them. A lot of people don't like the way displays look. So if you could hide them behind wallpaper or other uh, facades, uh, some companies are interested in, in that type of uh, integration. So now let's talk about Pixel Engine RGB. Uh, this, you know, just to re restate what this is, this is a transferable package. Uh, it's about 40 by 40 microns here. Each of these LEDs you see here are eight by 15 microns and the pads of those LEDs are down. And so this device is made on a, a larger silicon template wafer. And uh, this, device is made in a way that can be printed to a backplane and doesn't require any additional metallization to form the interconnect. So on the bottom of this device, we have sharp metallized pressure concentrators that connect to thin film wiring. It's, you can think of it as a deterministic type of ACF connection. Uh, a really, this is a really important part of our technology and I won't be able to go deep enough in it, but uh, the black layer here is a non-conductive adhesive. The very cool thing is once you print these and you cure this adhesive, it shrinks. And I, hopefully people can see it drives this point. There's a lot of compression and it really creates metal to metal deformation and creates a very high yield interconnection between this package and the display back plane. So that means that you can start making displays without having any sort of vacuum equipment afterward. You can just get wiring panels and print these and finish your displays. Um, it also allows repair. Another thing that it allows, and I, uh, let's, let me do a time check. I, 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 it's sort of a non-intuitive feature of this type of uh, device is that it actually enhances the mass transfer throughput. And it's non-intuitive because it looks like you're gonna transfer red, green, and blue LEDs to an interposer. And then you're gonna do a fourth transfer to make the display. It sounds like extra transfers, but it's actually not. And let me explain why it's not. It's because you're gonna make these at higher density than your display pixels on this intermediate wafer. And so what it lets you do is it lets you take relatively small stamp areas, but move relatively high density of LEDs uh, to this wafer. So that's a wafer to wafer transfer printing process. And then since you transferred to this larger wafer, it lets you scale the stamp. And so it lets the display maker only deal with one device type, just this and they use a large stamp. And in this example, I can print this 25 inch display in three print steps. The net net of this is that you can get, uh, you can, it's dependent on the display application, but it's very easy to achieve greater than 1 billion micro LEDs transferred per hour per print head. It's because uh, if you're transferring 320 million of these, each of these has three LEDs in it. So this is a, it's an approach to really enhance throughput of mass transfer. I also didn't mention one other thing of this technology. When you put the LEDs on a wafer, you get wafer level lithography and wiring capabilities. And so it lets you scale to smaller micro LEDs. 
If you try to put really small micro LEDs directly onto the display panel, you face some of the uh, CD lines in space challenges that you would get on a huge panel of glass. But uh, so in other words, you can put very small LEDs here and you fan out, you fan out to the connection points on this square. And then that matches up good with the panel uh, lithography. The final device I will uh, talk about, let's see if my slide advances. Yeah, the final one I'll talk about is the Pixel Engine All-in-One. So this is a more advanced device because it brings the LEDs and the drive circuitry together in a three-dimensional uh, integrated solution. And so this is a CAD model, but I'll show you that we've really uh, demonstrated this. This is that micro IC that, that has the memory, the 48-bit memory, and it can drive these LEDs in constant current. I'll point out a few features. You might notice that... Uh, this does not have through silicon vias, but it does have uh, interconnections from the front to the back of the device. And we simply go around the edge of the device. You might see an edge interconnect here. Also, what's not really apparent is there's a sharp pressure concentrator. There's actually four on this device. So this device also has four sharp points that connect to the display back plane. So again, this is a device that's really well suited for making displays where you can do additive repair of uh, defective pixels uh, afterwards. So I'll show you some examples. Hopefully this shows up okay. This is, um, this is a two metal level wiring panel and hopefully you can see where the Pixel Engine all-in-ones all -in have been printed. You can also see that there's a secondary site that's designed to do additive repair if you have a defective pixel. Uh, and here's a you know, simple example of a working display. Of course, we're working to make uh, higher performance displays with these devices now. I'm about to wrap up. I just wanna, uh, you know, we work with partners. Uh, we are not a company, you know, our business model is not to make displays. We develop solutions for display makers. And so, Really, we're developing a fabulous semiconductor model to support um, our growing network of partners with these types of pixel engine devices. Uh, so this is a snapshot of some of our uh, uh, most important partners. Uh, some are not named, but uh, you see a lot of uh, LED companies and you see some IC companies and then uh, some companies that help us with our equipment. So uh, yeah, if you, uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, if you're interested in partnering with us, uh, we offer the mass transfer equipment. Uh, we have over 500 patents in this field. We've been working on it for uh, some time. Uh, you can work with us to design uh, new displays that use pixel engines. So thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Chris, uh, for the great talk. And uh, so I do see uh, one question come from the chat is uh, uh, Salah Hudi. And uh, his question is, uh, what would be the alignment accuracy for such fast transfer? Yeah, it's a good question. I probably moved too quickly. We've done many projects. We, we routinely get uh, plus or minus 1.5 micron three sigma. So if you imagine you print 100,000 devices and you measure the location of each one, you'll get a Gaussian looking distribution that has about a half micron sigma value. And that Gaussian, with some iteration, that Gaussian can be really well centered uh, to the target point. I do know that some other groups, uh, there's some groups that have really pushed that, that are interested in photonics. And I think that, uh, I think there's some papers out there, like I think U Ghent, for example, I think has some papers where they've uh, really gone beyond that half micron sigma value. So it, it can be better than that. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, any question? So we only have one minute left, probably, okay. Question, on slide 27 with regard to the pixel engine all in one, you mentioned repair. Do you have your opinion on that? Yeah, we, we, repair is a really important part of micro LED displays because uh, to, to get started making these, you have to have, you know, a huge number of nines to, to yield a display that maybe it may have 32 million subpixels. Uh, so 
our philosophy is we, we want solutions that would let you to turn on a display, identify defective pixels, and then have tools that would let you go additively fix those pixels. And so um, this, um, we call this interconnected print. This interconnected print technology is built to allow you to, even after the, the display's been energized, it's not air sensitive like OLED, right? So the, you know, nothing sensitive. You can, actually, uh, you can actually go additively, you can cut out bad devices and then you can go insert, uh, you could go insert a replacement in a nearby location. That's one of the benefits of, micro LED, since the light emitters are small, your eye can't detect, you know, if, if you print into the secondary site, your eye can't detect that as an error. Okay, uh, thanks, thanks, Chris. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, thank you for presentation. Uh...